Hello again guys, how is it going? It is Fake Eric, I'm actually with another Legends of Rune Terror video and I revisited Soraka Tarm Kench in patch 1.16. Obviously, Gohard is extremely popular at the moment and one of the previous decks that was really efficient against it was Soraka Tarm Kench, which surprisingly I've seen little to no play of in most of my general ranked ladder games. That could have something to do with the fact that with the inclusion of Grand Plaza into the meta, that deck would typically do quite well against Rakatam Kench on paper, in theory, because some of the units that can be coming out at a really strong mid-range stats can indeed interact pretty well with the Rakatam Kench. Outside of that, the inclusion of Aftershock into the meta was and could have been uh, typically a really strong card against that archetype as well, having a really good card against uh, the Star Spring itself in landmark removal or just general good removal uh, would have also led to the downfall of Swakatam Kench. Now, as the meta is slowly uh, stabilizing and we're starting to see, like, you know, certain decks appearing more and more frequently and just all the decks starting to come back. Maybe it's time to return to Soraka Tom Kench. And so I did, and I started picking up wins pretty consistently. I was able to climb up to 100 LP really quickly. I tend to uh, I tend to play a variety of decks, which would lead to me, you know, losing some LP consistently and having to reclimb again. But I was able to reclimb again with Soraka Tom Kench. And I think if I was to strictly only play Soraka Tom Kench, it would actually be a pretty good deck for laddering at the moment. I think it's uh, at the moment being slept on and kind of maybe forgotten about a little bit, but um, it actually isn't that bad of a deck. And against the Grand Plaza, you can still win that matchup. It's not exactly super unfavored, but they can tend to have some good answers to your stuff. But yeah, um, if anybody's interested, we're going to have a few games here today. I'm just going to showcase two games I had against Gohard. Uh, so you can see just how good it is against that deck. And um, if you are sick of seeing Gohard, which I'm sure a lot of Runeterra players are at the moment, uh, Soraka Tom Kench could be something you might consider picking up and having a shot. Um, if you haven't played it before, I do have a deck guide out, which I'll uh, leave in the link linked down below. It'll also pop up just there. If you're interested, go and watch that. It's from a couple of patches ago, but extremely relevant still. The information is extremely relevant. There's lots to absorb from that one. So be sure to go check that out as well. You guys have a fantastic day and I will see you soon. It typically, unless they're playing Crumble, this is a very difficult matchup for Gohard. Typically. Just because they pack your bags doesn't really kill our stuff. How's the emote unlocks work? You get a certain amount of emote slots depending on how well your stream's doing. So the better your stream does, the better the emote selection. Oh, he's gonna play around Pale Cascade. Cool. Lucky me. Alright, step one complete. We found Star Spring. Step two, get Tom Kench into the field. Greedy or not to be greedy? Greedy. I don't think he blocks here, right? Your hurry. Um, maybe yeah, glimpse beyond. But he can't glimpse beyond and play go hard. Like he can't like play go hard then draw. So I guess that's a pretty good outcome for me. Unless he wants to glimpse here as the jagged butcher. Uh, I guess that was greedy of me. Ganked made a Vladimir deck? That's high quality. Okay. Die 
that is expensively unique. Strap pass. Uh, what does your hand look like if you just pass like this? Um, quite possibly he has no units. That's so rare to see them pass with that much mana. He's got an expensive hand. This guy's kept removal, I think. So more than likely, there's going to be a copy of Vengeance, but hopefully not Crumble. And if that's the case, I'm actually going to develop this turn hard. Unless you top deck the unit. These might be four spells, uh, five spells. And a Lidros. Gee, dude. James, good night, man. Good night, James. Happy New Year. His hand's hella expensive. Um, he could vengeance. Well, you won't be my friend? I'll come over there right now, bend you over, and suck a fart out your butthole. You brought a fire. Thanks for the follow, man. Hope you're having a good day. Hello. Probably has a Doom Beast. Maybe a Withering Whale as well. It's okay if I lose the Star Shepherd as long as I don't lose the Boxtopus too. So unless he has like a third Gohard. A third Gohard or the off chance that he goes. Whoa, some of these plays are so weird. I can't get a I can't get a read on this person at the moment. He did just draw into Twist of Fate though. It looks like his strategy will be to try and cheese me with the Twisted Fate flip. So let us figure out a way to deal with that. I can't devour it this turn though. I think he may have Ruination. I need a soft pass here. Everyone here, let's go. Come closer. I don't fight. Grasp of the Undying. I think I'm playing around too many cards here. That's okay. This he's gonna he's gonna play something here to clear one of my units. This has to give us a read for his hand. All or nothing. Swinging with Twist of Fate is a little bit a troll. Even swinging with Elise feels a little bit trolly. Cause I can just like block like this. Another obstacle. So young. Like I don't really see what that effectively achieved unless he's going to clear the broadback protector with grasp that that would work i guess
So it's just withering. Okay. I guess he thought maybe I was gonna block with the box to push. Alright, here's where we can pretty much devour the Twist of Fate. And then, like, for example, if he uses Vengeance on the Tom Kench, then I can just, like, you know, go and eat the Twist, uh, eat the twist of Fate with the box to push. Doesn't even look like he has the right answers here anyway, so... Lucky us. He's played two Gohards. I'm gonna play Star Spring here. How deep do I go into the greed? I don't think playing Broback Protector actually achieves anything. This is a fine pass. He can't play Lidros next turn, so I guess we're chilling. Usually it's around about when they're trying to threaten you with Lidros, which I think he, he would have kept Lidros in his opening hand, actually, if he got offered it. So there's a good chance he has a Commander Lidros on the far three cards in his hand. That's a card I would definitely keep if I was playing Go Hard against Time Punch Soraka. There's a card I would definitely keep. We could use a bite. Looks like he's just gonna swing at me like a madman. A little bit curious because if he damages me, I get to get brought back protective value. Three plus two is five. Sure. I'm just gonna let the box supposed go down there and I'm gonna set up this broad back protector and then I'm gonna damage it with fortune croaker he has no ruination so I think we're just chilling and if he does for whatever reason have two copies of go hard we can beat the pack your bags I'm not even going to use the acquired taste there there's really no need I'm going to punish him for not spending his mana. Where there's a will, there's a meal. I think the safest play I can make is to first of all open attack. So I guess I just win now, right?
very anticlimactic. But I wouldn't just win. And I don't feel really bad for him. These go hard players be getting in my head, dude. He really wanted to damage me. To be fair, the correct play for him to make was to go for the Lidros and then pray for no healing. Uh, it's pretty obvious that I was probably going to have a way of winning the game. Because he could play Lidros, next turn he could play Atrocity, that can sometimes win the game. The issue here there is that I had the two brought back protectors, so the game was already over pretty much. It sometimes works if I haven't got brought back protectors. Is there a fast deck that can win against Gohard somewhat consistently? A fast deck? Uh, cards with uh, decks with Fiora in them can win against Gohard actually. So you can play like all in Fiora decks. They can sometimes do very well. But that's a very specific archetype that has a uh, much more uh, linear matchup spread. Notify is really good too. I guess Zoe Karma would do good as well as as Gank said. Anything that can, I think, or if you want a fast strategy though, Gank, I think he wants like a fast strategy. I think the fastest strategy I could think of outside of um. Yeah, it's pretty much just Fiora. Yeah, Fiora is extremely threatening against Gohard decks. Where are you? <laughs> Zoe Karma probably isn't very fast, no. But yeah, there's another deck that could um that could uh, win. So, yeah. What am I versing? Wait, Infinite Patreons is playing a Hapless Aristocrat in his deck? Maybe it's like a bait deck, maybe he's playing... No, this is not a bait deck, this is just a Hapless Aristocrat. Oh. Isn't that curious? Isn't that curious? Osu can sniff out any star anywhere. Most of Rika Rex's decks can do well against them. Yeah, overwhelmed decks actually can cream them. Been down. Let his knee out. I could definitely get behind that. No development, pretty easy guiding touch here, right? I'm gonna beat him up with Star Shepherds. I'm going to beat him up with multiple Boxtopuses and Srakas and Star Shepherds. This is kind of a nuts curve. I'm always up for a round or two. Damn it. All that glitters. Caring for the stars shows their true potential. Can't wait to see them when they're all grown up. This is actually a pretty insane curve. I really want to develop this turn. But it doesn't help me flip Soraka. Boxtopus would be fantastic here, but it's most likely going to get pinged off. I'm just going to threaten him with a ton of damage. I think that's going to be fine. If for whatever chance he has a way of flipping the twist of fate, that's going to be a little bit spooky. To be fair though, for him to deal with the Boxtopus, I think the best play he has is to actually play Gohard. Well, you won't be my friend? I'll come over there right now, binge you over and suck a fart out your butthole. No. It pretty much locks him into Gohard, doesn't it? Or playing a unit. I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a shot. He 
If he doesn't find that go hard or a one mana ping, he's. Wow. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Obviously, I'm not going to push as much damage now, but clearing the Twist of Fate feels very good, man. It feels very good, man. That was such a risky play. But one that but one that could work. I mean, as I said, the worst thing that happens is that he probably be, uh, probably plays go hard, and then I just do the same attack anyway. The best case scenario was exactly that. Thank you for the follow, by the way. I'm not going to pronounce your entire name because it's hella long. Opening up with a dread by deckhand. Thinking I might fortune croaker here. This plays into withering whales super hard though. Maybe just brought back protectors fine. I'll clear a path for you. Good to see you too, Vin. It looks like he might be thinking about withering whale or something. Um we're gonna protect the box to push here. Alternatively, I could hush the keg if I want to be super greedy. I'll just protect the box to push. We're all family here. I'm a people person. Okay. I guess we're top decking like a god at the moment. I should probably play Star Spring. I need this to kind of win the game. If you silence a keg and they play another keg, what happens? It goes on the stack. It goes on the stack and it is silenced. Should I protect the broadback protector maybe here? I'm just thinking about who I want to heal. It's probably going to be Broadback Protector. Let's go, Osu. I am going to get my draw at burst speed. This just heals my Star Spring for more, so that's probably worth. The possibilities are infinite. But if you don't destroy the keg, the keg will remain. And it will come back. In the end, just a glimpse beyond. The kegs, the kegs are one unit. They are like one type of thing. My opponent has a lot of kegs. That is for sure. Fortune Croker on the Soraka. No more of your crap suit losses, please. At this point, Tom Kench is a little irrelevant and no go hard for my opponent. We're all family here. I'll protect you. Wait. Was that a mind meld? He's not playing. Wait. Hang on. This guy's playing Burblefish. Is he maybe playing Fresh Lobster's version that runs the Burblefish? Because I haven't really encountered that version before. Kind of need some more cards here. I'm gonna use this Pale Cascade. Also protects my Star Shepherd. Yeah, we 
punishment fair? I don't think it really matters in what order I attack. I just make it a good habit to usually be swinging with the biggest thing last, can sometimes be relevant. I'm actually going to swallow my broadback protector just to help play, uh, soften my board state against ruination. If he ultimately decides to kind of do some play like this, I'm probably going to swallow something. It doesn't, it never changes the amount of healing I get though, so that's probably not worth. I'm just going to develop Broadback Protector. He actually damaged my Nexus, so now Broadback Protector is going to get some value. Perhaps in anticipating that I don't have another one. Yeah, I'm, I'm suspecting that he's playing Burblefish, so... No point to use the acquired taste. We can force him to like replace his entire board. I think with between the two hushes and the acquired taste, we should be fine. I guess one thing I'm not considering is the potential, the chance that he has crumble. But anyway, we're just past gaming at the moment. Uh, we technically win at the end of this turn, so we're fine. We actually just don't need to play anything at all. Gameplay. So he does have the burble fishes actually. That's a jettison. Very anticlimactic finish, but I think we played that match pretty clean, did what we needed to do. And yeah, like the Kench got me back up to 100 LP as expected earlier today. It took a bit longer than I would have anticipated, but the deck's actually still just fire and it's really good against Gohard. Uh, typically, yeah, it is. I'd say if I played 10 games against Gohard, I'd probably win 8. Oh, 
big responsibility to Shepard Stars. Yeah, that's what it would feel like when playing Soraka Kenche. That's probably why we don't see as much of it, because it's very polarizing in its matchups. It always has been, though. It's always be typically been a very polarizing deck. If I kill you, I don't fuck you, stupid. Some matchups will just they'll just bend over and roll over. Does death follow me or peace? I'm in a bit of deja vu here, guys. Lucian uh, Hecarim is probably my least favorite deck to face at the moment. Can sniff out any star yeah, I feel ya. I feel you on that one. There's not a lot that beats it, Rowan. There's not actually a tremendous amount that beats it. I think common strategies were aggro decks. I think discard aggro typically might have a pretty good chance of just smoking them really quickly. Uh, you could also hope they don't high roll. That's one way of doing it. You could also hope they don't draw Grand Plaza. The deck is a lot less functional without Grand Plaza. That is 100% for sure. I think this is one of the most Monka S plays I've seen. Is this is this correct? What kind of a fucking cooked play is this, man? Please don't hurt them. Osu, help. He devs has Hecarim in hand. Okay. Okay, I can get behind that. I probably don't want to damage my Tom Kench then, do I? No, the stars. I need to make sure Tom Kench always has the ability to... Yeah. I'm going to need to make sure, at least if I don't draw any combat tricks, on curve, Tom Kench can devour. That's going to be correct, I think. I don't think he has Grand Plaza. Guiding touch is not good enough. But we can... Yeah, yeah, I got... There's some plays I could do here. He's not attacking on evens, which is really important. It just means that this turn, I could do whatever I want, as long as I don't die. And then on the turn, he decides to play Hecarim. I can buy your brunch, eat something with stats, give my Tarm Kench unlimited power, and then devour every damn thing he plays. I just gotta be careful for the smock. So cards that can potentially beat us. Obviously a flipped a flipped Lucian's gonna be kind of nuts. I think this is the turn where he has to put on maximum amount of pressure. Make my turn really awkward. Or I could just pass. What the fuck? Okay, I think it's I think it's pretty safe just to do this. It's like he's passing here because he doesn't want to play something that I can eat. But this is actually... Soul Shepherd is super threatening as well. This is a good threat to go off the field. I actually don't think I'm allowed to pass here. Could you ever buff Kench to eat Heck reliably? Yeah, of course. Of course. Better when you feel better. Osu, help! 
I think this astral protections uh, very much, very much the nuts. This is hella risky though. Are they playing like Mark of the Isles and shit like that? I didn't think so. Appetizers of plenty. So I have to pass this turn, right? Can't let him play Hecarim for free. Where there's a will, there's a meal. They do play Mark in some lists. That's hella scary. Okay, I'm not threatened by that. So I'm just gonna develop some blockers. So what's in store for me, Nima? I need time for commute time. This you know. There is a system. Okay. I think I have to sacrifice the Star Shepherd here, right? This is He could also have Harrowing. Harrowing is going to be a little bit funny. I'll protect you. Oh, I don't require me. Hang on, this is probably an important turn. I think I could just start off with brought back protector. Our mountain groves are full of dangers, but I know them all. There's a chill in the air. Oh, here we go. Can this block? It can. What is this Hecarim? Four out of seven. Let me in, Tommy boy. Oh, I'll be happy to accommodate you, Pablo. He really wants to play Hecarim. He really wants... He really wants to set up something. That's what he wants to do. I think this card draw is going to go a long way for him. Well, what if he's playing Ruination?
I don't require a menu. It's either harrowing or ruination. I need my... I could have drew my star spring, but I got rid of his grand plaza instead. Looks like he drew a pesky spectre. He'll probably take this pass. I can kill him though. I'm actually representing lethal damage at the moment. If he passes. Alright, let's mess some folks up. Time to get rowdy. Another nibble. Beamer. Don't really understand that attack, but sure. This guy has just been like holding up mana for every card he needs to play. It's looking kind of ruination, isn't it? Okay. You think it would have been played last turn? What the fuck? That was very weird. Why did he swing at me with the grizzled rangers? Well, you won't be my friend. I'll come over there right now, binge you over, and suck a fart out your butthole. You could never drop Hecarim. Wait, who was the bigger beta? Was it me being outbaited or did I outbait him? By always holding up resources for Hecarim. It was like neither player wanted to overextend. I think that was the power of passing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was convinced like he, he was he was like working a strategy or something. Like he knew exactly what, what was going to happen. But in the end, he just played Grizzled Ranger and then attacked me and then didn't have any blockers.